Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Like I always say, there's no other name that I can greet you on because it's this name that has saved me and that has made me the woman I am today. And I just want to take this time to welcome you all on this episode of Open Book. And for those of you tuning in, for those of you that's about to tune in, for those of you tuning in for the first time, I want to welcome you all on this episode of Open Book. And I am so excited and honored to have husband and wife team Mr. and Mrs. Shahid Pranisha Abdul on this episode of Open Book. They will be sharing their story with us on this, on how they found God. Welcome, Pranisha and Shahid. We are so pleased to have you both on the show today. I truly believe that many people are going to be affected by your story. About two weeks ago, I heard a testimony on a South African radio station. During that interview, I heard God saying, They are your next guest on Open Book. In obedience, I reached out to the radio station. And yeah, we are. So if you yeah. Pranisha, I'd like to begin with your journey, if I may. Yes. So Pranisha, please can you tell us a bit about yourself and your background, where you were born, what religion you were born into, and what was your life back then? Hi. Hi, viewers. It's uh, such a humble privilege to be on your show, Tessarina. Thank you so much for having us. Um, so my name is Pranisha and I was born Hindu into a Hindu family. I was born in December 1978 in a small town called Peter Maritzburg in KwaZulu Natal in South Africa. Um, and I was very um, into, uh, you know, going to temples and I was a devout Hindu and I loved God very much. But I always knew that there was something missing in my life. Um, I asked my parents a lot of questions and they never could answer me, you know, with regards to why we worshipped idols and why we did the things that we did. Um, so I was very confused as a child. And, you know, when I met Jesus, I asked him one day, I said, so if you say in your word that you never leave us nor forsake us, then where were you all those years when I was a Hindu? Yes. And I asked him to give me um, you know, some sort of proof that he was in my life. And he actually took me right back to when I was in primary school. And we went to an Indian school and we would stand in assembly and we would say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yes. And I only learned later on when I met Jesus that that is the most important prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. And yes. so I, I would go home in the evenings and I would pray to the idols. But I always found myself praying, Our Father who art in heaven. Yes, yes. yes. And that was very powerful for me when I had that revelation. Amen. And in the first, amen. The first time that I met Jesus was when I was 17. And I started to experience some demonic activity in my yes. bedroom. Yes. And I was in grade 12. And yes. I actually failed my major exams because it was quite traumatic. And yes. my parents called, um, you know, we went to temples and we prayed about it, but the entity would not leave my room. And so eventually my parents called the local pastor from our community. And um, one of my aunts was a devout Christian and she came with a few elders from the church with the pastor and they stood in my bedroom and they prayed with authority. And, you know, they cast that uh, demon out of my room. And, and I stood there and I, and I saw them praying with such fervent, you know, fire. And at that time, I didn't know Jesus. I never heard the name Jesus in my life before. And, you know, Tess, um, I was actually saved at that time from that entity. And I ended up passing grade 12. But I never was introduced to Jesus. My aunt never even came forward and said, you know, um, let me tell you about the gospel. No, she was very respecting of the fact that we were Hindu. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, so then uh, in the same year, I actually met Shahid. Actually, a few months after this episode, I met Shahid. And um, it is totally taboo for a Hindu girl to fall in love with a Muslim boy. Yes, yes. yes. It's, it's absolutely not heard of in the Indian community. So it caused quite an uproar with my family and with everyone that we knew. They just could not understand how I could fall in love with uh, a Muslim guy. And Shahid wasn't just a Muslim. 
Um, Shahid was that boy that stood by the shop and didn't have any aspirations in life and he didn't have any goals. Uh, but God allowed me to see his heart and God allowed me to love him unconditionally despite what his circumstances were. And, you know, for people that are going through stuff like that now where we're so quick to judge a person and we're so quick to label people. And, you know, I want, to, I want to declare today that my husband was a no one. You know, no one had any faith in him. No one had any hope for him. But to see where God has brought him today, has brought us today, you know, nothing is impossible for God. He can take a complete nobody and give them um, you know, hope and make them a member of society. And he's done that for, for Shahid. And I, I give God all the glory and all the praise for that because he allowed me to walk this long journey. I mean, I know Shahid for 22 years. We grew up together and we fought every challenge and every battle that we could face. We have been through so much. Yet. And um, just to sit here today and to actually tell you that that we serve a mighty and awesome God. And so after dating Shahid for 10 years, um, with, after going through all those struggles and all those hardships, we got married in 2006 and we, um, I converted to Islam. So I my name changed from Pranisha to Shahira Abdul. And we, we had a full Muslim ceremony and I was very committed to being a Muslim. I would read the English version of the Quran. Um, and on my prayer mat test, I actually met Jesus in the pages of an English wow. Quran. Wow. And his name, his name alone just sparked my interest. And every time I would see it, I would get a, a sense of excitement and a thrill inside of me. And my spirit was just so, you know, joyful every time I would see his name. And so, um, the, man, the magnetic force from his name just was so drawn, drawn me, it drew me to him. And I really wanted to find out the truth of who Jesus was in the Quran. Yes, and yes. so I, I did a lot of research and I, I looked up the difference between Christianity and Islam. And the main difference is that Jesus is the son of God. And in the Quran, he is only seen as a prophet and you know um, having having been so confused all my life uh, about who God was I really wanted the truth and I really wanted to do what was right and follow the the, the righteous path and and to find God for who he is and I think Jesus revealed himself to me in the most amazing way he would send me signs wonders and miracles wherever I went he yes, didn't want yes. to leave me alone. You know, he took a hold of me and he was like, I need you and, and I want you to follow me. I even said to him one day, Tess, I said, you need to leave me alone, Jesus. Yes. You know, I can't follow you. My husband is going to kill me when he finds out that yes. I want to be a Christian. Yeah. You know, uh, it's totally taboo for a Muslim wife to even mention the name Jesus in a household. Yes, yes. So it was quite a, a hard time, you know, with uh, telling Shahid that I wanted to be a Christian. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yes. Shahid, I'm actually going to hand over to you now. So you can tell us a bit about yourself, your background, where you were born, what religion you were born into, and what was your life like back then? Amen. Thank you so much, Tessarina, for this wonderful opportunity. We are truly humbled by this invitation and good evening, good morning to your listeners. Sorry, it's evening in South Africa. <laughs> good, good morning to your listeners. And I greet you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, so um, I was born into a Muslim home. So my background uh, for 36 years of my life was based on the Islamic faith. My, my parents uh, put me into Islamic school at a very young age. Um, I had to go and learn how to read and to recite Arabic and learn the Holy Quran. Um, mm. As a young Muslim boy, uh, that's, that's the foundation of growing up to be a righteous Muslim man. Go into Islamic school, learn Arabic, be able to recite Arabic out of your head. That's what a Muslim family 
uh, looks for when they send their kids to school. I must be honest, Tessarina, my journey through Islamic school for those, for those years from six to about 13, 12 or 13, was very, very challenging. Number one, I never spoke a different language like Arabic. Uh, so learning Arabic was, was extremely difficult. And we had a very, very staunch teacher at school. He used to often walk into our classrooms and randomly choose kids out of the class and come to the front of the class and you have to recite a verse out of the Quran just out of the top of your head. And if we didn't know it, he used to literally bend us over a desk and cane us in front of the entire class. So what I started to do on a, very often when, before I left home, I used to take toilet paper and stuff it in the back of my pants. Wow. So whenever it was my turn for, you know, to go into <laughs> yeah, the site yeah. of birth, if I didn't know it, the, the, the beating w wasn't going to be as, you know, as strong as not having yes, the toilet yes. paper in my pants. And I, I, I hated it. I must be honest. I, I disliked going to mosque. But because I was a young boy, I was forced to. My parents obviously insisted that I, mm. I go. And by the time I got out of pre-primary school or primary school, into high school, I found every possible way of truanting. Um, and that's what led me to engaging with the wrong crowd. I found myself joining a crowd of boys that were doing the exact same thing, trying to, you know, not go to school or, or not go to Islamic school and that sort of thing. And we became, you know, a, a bunch of friends. That's what led to experimenting with cigarettes. Mm. It then got even worse. I started experimenting with smoking marijuana and I got addicted to marijuana, unfortunately. And that led to harder drugs during the course of my more adult years. And for close to 10 years, I, I just lived a life of drug addiction, alcohol, you know, brushes with the law, getting arrested, stealing from home, uh, gang fights. And, you know, just, just a really, really bad patch in my life. You know, the devil had his, had his claws in mm -hmm. my life. At the time. And, you know, I used to come home some days, Tessarina, and I used to stand in front of the mirror as high as a kite. And I used to look, my, look at myself in the mirror and I literally used to speak to myself and tell myself, but this is not you. Mm -hmm. You know, I have, I have not been brought up to be this. This is not you. So deep down, I knew that this wasn't the right thing for me to do, but I was caught up in this game. Mm. And uh, for many years, for close to 10 years, I just joined the wrong guys, got involved with, the, with a whole lot of wrong stuff. And it led me down a very terrible path. Yes, yes, yes. Now, as we know, you met in 1996, but something, something else also happened during that time. You were living a double life. I remember in your testimony when you mentioned it. Can you clarify how you were living a double life? Um, Shahid. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so during those years, um, I did meet my wife, 1996, mm -hmm. but I was still involved in the gangsterism. I was still involved in the drug addiction and that sort of thing. But when I met my wife, um, I just put on this gentleman look. You know, I went home, I found the best clothes that I could find in my cupboard, had a clean yeah. shave, put hair back, <laughs> nice perfume. And when I met her, she met the facade, not yeah. the real me. So whenever I met her, so she fell in love with the facade that I was putting on. You know, the gentleman like, open the car door, pull the seat, you know, tell her that she looks beautiful and that sort of yes. thing. Yes. But when I, when I used to drop her off at home and, and leave her, I went straight back to my friends. Yeah. And as soon as I got to my friends, it was either smoking, smoking weed, consuming alcohol, doing whatever we did with the boys. And I did that for close to two or three years that we knew each other. And she knew absolutely nothing because whenever I was with her, I was the perfect gentleman. Mm -hmm. And whenever I was not with her, I was living a completely different life. I used to often go to nightclubs and people used to see me there that knew her and used to go and tell her and I used to say, but no, that it, it probably wasn't me. It was somebody that <laughs> yes, looked yes, like me. Yes. Probably it wasn't me. I was at home. I mean, you yeah. can phone home and speak to my mom. She yeah. will. And my mom did lie for me a lot. Yes, sometimes her mom me. does that. <laughs> yes. yes. So, so I lived a double life for many years until eventually 
uh, Tanisha did find out mm. and we broke up. I mean, which, which woman would really want to be involved with someone that is mm. heading to, for disaster? Mm. I mean, yes. there's absolutely no, you know, sane woman in this world that will want to go and date a, a guy that's on drugs yes, for, for, no, yes. for no apparent reason. Yes, and yes. Um, I must be honest, I think, um, you know, the love between us and the bond that we had kept us going back to each another. Yes, yes. Yes, we fought a lot and we broke up on numerous times, but the love just kept us going back. Yes. And you know what I love is when I listen to your testimony, a few things, when I listen to Pranisha's testimony, a few things jump out of me. And it was, you said that God allowed you to love your husband unconditionally, yet you were still practicing Hinduism and you didn't know Jesus back then. You also Amen. said you encountered an unconditional love that took you to the next step in your relationship, which you then got married to Shahid and then converted to Islam. But I want to ask you, because I want to break this down so the viewers can understand where and how it happened. Because now you went from Hindu and you went into um, Islam. How did it make you feel converting from that? How did it affect your beliefs, Pranisha? Uh, you know, Tessarina, I actually did it because um, it, it was the right thing to do. And in, in a Hindu culture, if a yes. woman married, getting married she has to follow her husband's religious beliefs. Yes. Um, so, so in a way, it was I wanted to do the right thing. I never forced Shahid to be a Hindu. Yes. Um, and simply because um, in the Muslim culture, if a Muslim man is, is, mar is bringing an outside person into Islam, they, it is mandate for them to convert. They, they is, it isn't, isn't even um, an option. You have to convert. It's yes. an expectation. So yes. I did it um, because I loved him and I wanted to serve him as, as a wife. But I must tell you that on my wedding day, it was probably the saddest day of my life with Shahid. Because yeah. simply because a Muslim wedding is, is such that you don't even know if you're getting married to, yeah. your, to your man. Because he goes to mosque and he gets married all by himself. And you have to sit and look pretty as a bride. And when he comes back from the mosque, he just tells you, okay, we are married now. And you're supposed to just accept that and believe it. Can I just add something there, Tessafina? Just, just a little bit for the viewers to understand a, a traditional Muslim marriage. So the woman needs to be with women because mm -hmm. it's a very segregated uh, thing. Um, so I had to go to a mosque with my dad and my siblings mm -hmm. and she had to send either her, her dad or her brother or mm. men folk to the mosque so that they could give permission for mm -hmm. her to marry me yeah so mm -hmm. i literally got married in the mosque with her father and brother wow. and by the time we got to the the venue where we hosted our guests we were already married i yes. literally walked to the venue and just put the ring on her finger and that's what that was it there was no, there was no uh, a religious ceremony that, that yes. took place or anything yes. like that. Yes. Her dad gave consent that she could get married to me. She could get married to you. Wow, wow, wow. So, Pranisha, you were following the rules and regulation of Islam. But I remember you said it before that you saw the name Jesus appearing in the Quran. I want to actually take this back to Shahid. Shahid, how did you feel when you found your wife's actually because you, she didn't have questions about that. How did you react to that when she was asking about the name Jesus appearing in the Quran? Wow, Tessarina, I was so upset. I was so mad. I literally, and the Lord must forgive me for this, because yes. I literally threw the Bible against the wall. When I found out that there was a Bible in our home, mm -hmm. I yes. was beyond mad, because it is, it is totally taboo. I mean, yes. Yes. I, I must be honest. I heard of the word, the name Jesus as a Muslim, mm -hmm. but all mm -hmm. I knew about Jesus was that he was, he was a prophet. There was no greater prophet than Prophet Muhammad. That's what I was brought up to believe. So yes, when yes. I heard that there was a Bible in my home, mm -hmm. I was so upset. I literally flung it against the wall. I pulled my wife to the, to the front door and I told her she can take her Bible and her stuff and she could leave. Mm -hmm. Because I did not yes. want to have anything to do with any Christian material, leave alone a Bible in my home. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I see. You know, um, 
even though he, he was so angry and he was so um, upset with me, mm. the thing that won him over was the love and the peace that I showed him. And I even said to him one day, I said, you know, uh, your book says that you can divorce me and that you can get married to three other ladies. But in the Bible, it says in Mark 10 verse 9 that what God puts together, Amen. no man Amen. will separate. And yes. I'm not going here, Shahid. I love you and um, I'm married to you and I'm committed to our marriage. We had our little one-year-old baby by then, yes. uh, our daughter. And I would kiss him goodnight and I would go to bed and he would be even more furious and confused. Yes, confused yes. Because why I was always so nice. Yes, yes, yes. You still had that peace and you still had that love towards him because God's word declares he is love. And that's what we need Amen. to do. That's what we need to Amen. the world out there because that's what drew people to God. Amen. Because I believe that's what happened. And then also yes. you relocated from Peter Marysburg to Johannesburg. How did that affect your marriage? Can you take, <sighs> take us through that? Yeah, well, well, let me add to that. So my, my wife gave me an ultimatum. Yes. It was either we move out of Peter Marysburg and my company of friends that I, that I had mm -hmm. and we relocate to another city so we could start off afresh. Mm -hmm. So it was an ultimatum and I did not want to lose her as much as I loved the company of my friends and the drugs and the parties, yes, you know, that yes. sort of thing. I knew I loved her and I didn't want to lose her. So I moved with her up to Johannesburg from Peter Marysburg. But yes, Rina, what I did do along with moving, I took the drug addiction with mm -hmm. me. So I moved my habit with me to Johannesburg. And that just started a whole cycle yet again. Yes, yes. Wow, wow, wow. So what I also get from this is that, you know, so, so many people out there, they think by relocating, that actually the situation is going to change, things are going to change around them. But if you don't deal with it, and if you don't allow God to deal with that addiction or whatever problem you are dealing with, you're going to carry that wherever you go with. Wouldn't you agree with Absolutely, that? absolutely, absolutely. So Shahid, where was, so Shahid, what would you say, what was the turning point in your life and how did it happen? Oh, wow. So during those days of um, the wife telling me that she wanted to be a Christian and she's learning about the Bible, I was still totally against it. But God reminded me of the days that she forgave me for yes. every single mistake that I had made during those 10 years of courtship. I mean, I brought so much of tears to my wife's eyes during those years that I was living that double life. And yes. God made me realize the one day sitting alone at home that if she could forgive you, why are you being so hard on something that she's passionate about? Yes. You know, there were days that I used to see her walk through the door. And I promise you, you know, people think that, you know, it's a white lie. But I literally used to see a beam of light walking mm -hmm. through our front door. And I used to be in this arrogant mood. I used to be, you know, I was just being a arrogant man at the time. You know, mm. this, I had this ego that was attached to me. Mm. And my wife used to walk through that door and all I could see was this radiant light just glowing from her and the big smile. And at mm. that time, we, I had got retrenched from, from my job. So I was sitting at home. My wife had to use public transport, which was the train service. And mm -hmm. it wasn't the safest mode of transport. But because we were in such a desperate situation, she was forced to use the train. Yet she used to come home beaming of, of happiness and beaming of light. And I wanted that. I mm -hmm. needed that in my life because I was in such a depressed state at the time. Yes. And you know what it was? It was Jesus through her right. that was showing me this is the light. Come to the light. Yes. So can you share with the viewers how was your encounter with God, because I remember you said in your interview as well, something happened out of the ordinary on your birthday. Can you share that with us? What happened and how oh, it wow. with God? Can you just take us through that by step? Yes, let me let me just get back to one thing first. But the wife needs to share something very yes. quickly. Okay. So, remember, I said that Jesus was pursuing me um, once. I I saw His name in the in the Quran. Mm -mm. And so I started to um, avoid him. I started to ignore the, the calling that he had on my life. And the one day, to Serena, uh, we, I was in the bathroom and I was on the toilet. And I looked down and 
in the mat of in the tiles on the tiles of the bathroom floor was a image of a face that looked like Jesus and I, I remember looking down and yes. I, you know I was like a deer caught in headlights and I said yes. I, I remember saying to him like what are you doing <laughs> in the mat yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know and as a Muslim as a Muslim, you you meant to be so clean and so pure yeah. before before coming before God to, to to present your prayers and you know to just to, to seek His face. And here was Jesus revealing Himself to me while I was in the bathroom. Wow. And so I said to Him, you know, you actually are for real. The yeah. fact that you are showing me your face while I'm in the bathroom yes. means that you are for real. Mm. That you know Jesus comes for you despite who you are and where you are because he, he is yes. omnipresent yes, he is yes. everywhere at the He's same everywhere. time and that was my turning point to Serena and not long after that I actually googled um, my encounter with Jesus was, was just about to ask this. only with him no one told me about him no yeah. one evangelized me no yeah. one spread the gospel to me I mm -hmm. met with him and the Holy Spirit guided me throughout my entire journey and he's still continuing to do so. So yes. I went on to Google and I said, fine, Jesus, you want me now. So what must I do? So yes. I, had to, I, I read that you had to be saved in order to yeah. enter into a relationship with Jesus. Yes. So I Googled, what does it mean to save yourself? And this is very funny because yeah. you're a complete stranger from the United States of America. Yeah. A video popped up on the screen and I clicked it and it was a it was a guy that said, Are you ready to commit your life to the Lord? And I was at work and I had my headphones on and I was yeah. trying to be really discreet because I didn't want anyone to know what I was doing. And I said, Yes, I think I'm ready now. And and he led me to the Lord and I was so happy. I was like free in my heart. I knew I was a Christian there and then. <laughs> yes, yes. Wow, wow. And God said you will use anything and anyone to come. Amen. Amen. Powerful. Amen. An amazing testimony, Pranisha, because I was going to ask you, how was your encounter? And you just shared how you were not led by anyone, but God used Google, you know, and that is just so amazing. So Amen. coming back to your question as well, Shahid, how did it happen for you? Can you share that with the viewers? Yes, amen. You know, the Bible does talk about signs and, and miracles and wonders. And when he is pursuing you, he is going to show you that he is for real. And that's exactly what he did for my wife. He showed her that, yes, you're seeking me and I'm going to show you that I'm for real. And yes. that's what it was. I mean, the first day that she showed me the picture, remember, I wasn't saved at the time. I didn't know yes. Jesus at the time. I yes. looked at her and I said, are you nuts? Yes. Like, are you like losing your marbles? Yes. <laughs> all I see is lines that you, that you took a picture from yourself when all I see is lines and I couldn't see it. But I yeah. promise you, when I got saved mm -hmm. and when I looked at the picture again, amen, Jesus' face was so prevalent yeah. on that picture. It was wow. just, it was amazing. Yes. So getting back to yeah. So when I found out about the Bible, I got really upset. But a few days later, I found myself sitting at home all alone with my little daughter, Leah, and I went into our bedroom and I found the CD that was somewhat hidden away from, <laughs> from the eye. Yes. And, and I picked it up and it, and it read Hillsong. Yes. And I thought, okay, Hillsong. And I put it into the CD player and lo and behold, it was the beautiful, talented Hillsong. Wow. Chesarina, if when people ask me what led me to the Lord, it yes. was Hillsong. Wow. It was seeing my wife become yes. a brand new creature. And it yes. was Hillsong preaching the word of God through music yes. to me. Wow. That's wow. what led me to the Lord. I yes. literally broke down and I cried. For a man to cry tears mm. is not common. Most men have got this ego about them and to cry mm -hmm. is, not a, is not a manly thing. Mm -hmm. But the word of God through the music broke me down to a little boy. I used to sit there and listen to these lyrics and it used to speak to my soul. And yes. that's what led me to the Lord. Wow, wow. So I would like to share, I'm going to start with Pranisha to say, how has your life changed since accepting Christ? In oh, your wow. <laughs> wow. 
Well, I am talking to you on a live podcast from South yeah. Africa. That's how yes. my life. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We give God all the glory. Amen. 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 Praise Him. Um, dear Serena, first and foremost, I I was washed clean. I was mm. redeemed. I was given a place in the kingdom of God as mm. a daughter of the Most High King. Mm. Amen. You know, that, that is the biggest uh, badge that I have on my shoulder. That, that alone is enough to actually tell you how much my life has changed. And just to see myself as, as the way God sees me, as, um, as a daughter that he loves unconditionally. Mm. And you notice... Um, our lives are completely and utterly changed. We mm. just live and breathe Jesus. Jesus. And I must add this, uh, when we were married for 10 years in 2016, we actually got married in Christ. So we took our wedding vows on our 10th wedding anniversary. And it was the most beautiful marriage that we could have ever asked for. And yes. I really and truly have the opportunity to marry Shahid again. Mm. I mean, how mm. many women can actually marry the love of their life twice in their yes. lifetime? Yes. Wow. I was so blessed to actually mm. have that opportunity of just getting married to Shahid again. So we actually very involved in ministry. We, yes. we go out to churches and we share our story because we want people to know that we are just ordinary, ordinary people, people. Yes. you know, and if God can do that for us, surely he can do it for mm. anyone. anyone. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you yes. are a drug addict or whether you are a professor at the university. Yes. God, yes. God loves you. Yes. And he is a true living God. He knows each of us by name. Yes, yes, yes. So, Pranisha, on that, I would like you to share this as well. There are many people out there who have turned Muslim after falling in love. Some of them look back and believe that, no, now that they have turned Muslim, they cannot turn to Christ, that they have made a choice and they cannot believe in Jesus because of their choice. What would you say to them? You know, uh, the Bible says that we need to seek God in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. So if you live in your life and you, are, you know for a fact that there is a piece missing, which is the truth. You know, mm -hmm. it's like a mystery. If you're solving a mystery, you need to know the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yes. And for me, that was my um, turning point in that mm -hmm. I needed to know for sure that I was on the right track. I've only got this one life to live. And I want to do the right thing and go home in the right manner. So yeah. if there are people that are listening right now and you feel in your spirit that something is amiss, do not disregard it. Go and seek the face of God and ask him to reveal himself to you. You know, he is so alive and he is so tangible. Yes, we cannot see him with our naked eye, but he is there. He is yes. there. And all you have to do, the Bible says that those that call upon the name of the Lord, that he will listen to them. He will be there. So if you are unsure about who Jesus is, just talk to him. You know, he is just such a fun person. I always enjoy my, my time with him because we, we, I don't see him as this God that is unreachable. Mm. Yes, he's my yes. best friend. He's my best friend. And he's always there. He's always listening. Yes. So just if, you, if not write to him, he loves it when we write to him in our Amen. alone time, in a journal. And, you know, James 4 verse 8 says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Near to you. So Amen. if you are seeking the truth, I would encourage you to just go and, and do these things and you will see that he will send you those signs, wonders, and miracles mm. too. Amen. This Rina, you know, the Bible also talks about my people will perish for a lack, lack of, of knowledge. knowledge. Yes. Now, yes. for any Muslim out there that feels the urge to go and see Jesus, mm. I can honestly tell you that if you go and if you go and start speaking the word of Jesus in your life, he is going to change you in so many ways that you are going to be this brand new creature. Amen. Yes, the condemnation is going to settle in your mind because, you know, I am so glad I live in a country where 
we are free to practice any religion that we want to. You know, if I was, if I was living in another country where, you know, I, uh, sorry, I'm not even going to mention it, but I could be put to death yes. for leaving Islam to go and to go and become a Christian. I could be put to death. Yes. So if I can encourage any Muslim out there that's listening. God is love and the 99 names of Allah in, in, in the Quran does not even speak about love. If you go and look it up, and I'm encouraging people to do that, go and look up all the names of Allah in the, in the Quran. Not mm. one of them represents love. Yet mm. Jesus only speaks about love. Yes. Everything about being a Christ follower is love. Amen. Amen. And that's the biggest thing for us. It's love. It's Amen. loving anyone and everyone. No matter Amen. what your circumstances are, you love people. Amen. Amen. The word does declare love your neighbor as you love yourself. Amen. Amen. So I just want to thank you both, Pranisha and Shahid, for coming on Open Book to share your amazing testimony on how God didn't look at your religion, but they looked at your hearts. And you oh. with 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, say, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The Amen. old passed away. Behold, the new has come. John 14 verse 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, I am the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you both for coming on this episode of Open Book. We love you both and thank you so much. God bless you both. God bless you. Thank love you guys too. We All the you. best. Thank you so much. God bless. God bless. Bye.